Welcome back to the Obsession Engineering Garage again. I've had a nice tea break and even dropped some stuff at the post office. So the next thing to do with the BMW engine is to put the side covers and the sump on. So it's not a lot of work left really. The vast majority of the big bits is done. So this is just pottering along, making sure everything's nice and clean, making sure everything goes in correctly and basically buttoning the engine up. So sit back, relax and before you know it, it'll be finished. The first bit I'm going to do is I'm going to put the starter gears back in. So that's like a little lay shaft, uh, lay gear here that runs from the starter motor to the uh, sprag clutch. Put the sprag clutch in, um, put the clutch, clutch push rod back in there when I can speak properly, and then this side cover will be ready to refit. And then all I'll do is I'll just d run a uh, oil stone over here to double check the face is good. Do the same with the... Uh, with the cover itself and bolt everything together. As you can see in here the gears are refitted so it goes from the starter motor just up here in the dark onto the big wheel of the uh, reduction gear. That's got a smaller gear behind this washer which drives onto the back of the sprag clutch. Now the sprag clutch is like a one-way clutch it'll only rotate the engine one way so when the engine's running the sprag clutch won't engage and so everything just freewheels. So what I've also done is I've cleaned up all the face around here, uh, run an oil stone across it to make sure it's perfectly flat. I've done the same with the outer cover, removed all the old sealant, removed any old oil and bits from it, giving it a really good clean out so it's perfect fit. And now I need to put it on. Now BMW, other than on the clutch, don't use gaskets. So it's crankcase sealant and I'll be putting a thin smear all the way around the cover so that when I put it on, well, it's got sealant on it, obviously. We've uh, abandoned the um, single-use BMW bolts and put these nice shiny stainless steel hex head ones in, so we can use them as many times as we want. So that's this side done. I shall go around the other side and put the water pump in. So around the other side of the engine, and the water pump drives off that square tab that comes off the oil pump. So that locates into the slot there. So I'll just check that the seal, it looks like it's in good condition, which it does. I'm not bothering to strip the pump down because it's done so little mileage that I know there won't be anything wrong with it. And the water pump's a fairly hardy item anyway. So I'll put a smear of grease on the O-ring to help it slide into the engine. And uh, then I'm just going to offer it up and try and sort of slide it in. Slide it in. Um, the advantage of having the engine on its back is that I can actually look up and make sure the uh, slot's connecting and if I need to I can just turn the crank a little bit to make everything mesh together without having to force anything. That's the water pump fully bolted in and engaged to the oil pump so that's uh, driven off the crank. So that's that bit done. The next bit I'm going to do is this uh, what would normally be a pickup cover but on these BMWs the pickup's actually over there but I'm still going to refer it to a pickup cover. Um, so just the normal thing I'm just going to Make sure this face is perfectly clean. Make sure the last washer is on this uh, drive gear because this can move around. And then I'll clean the cover up and bolt it on. So that's the pickup cover bolted on. And I've also refitted this, which is the hole for the uh, crank locking tool for setting the timing. Now, because this goes straight into the crankcases, and if that fell out, there would be a lot of oil everywhere very quickly, and that would be very, very bad. Uh, I lock tight them, and I will then put a, uh, a paint mark on it as well to prove that it's locked tighted and you know it's easy to check then that it's not coming loose so that's that bit done next bit is around the back and do the sump I've been around all the oil ways again and I've made sure everything is blown out so it's perfectly clean and taped over the outer hole so nothing gets in once I've put the sump and bits on so I've got to put the oil thermostat into here which diverts oil either to or from the to the cooler or not to the cooler, obviously, thermostat. And then I've got the pressure relief valve and uh, suction strainer. So I shall be checking the strainer to make sure there's no debris in it before I fit it. I've blown these out. I've uh, put some brake cleaner in there and blown the holes out so they're perfectly clean because all the bolts in here want to be loctited. So I've cleaned those. I shall clean the bolts up and bolt everything together. So that's the oil thermostat refitted, the oil strainer, which if I show you up the hole, 
is just a gauze, so any big bits, you know, any excess um, crankcase or anything will get caught in there and not block the filter up too quickly. So that's all fitted. I've double checked the pressure relief valve is working correctly. I've fitted a new gasket onto here and I've Loctited the bolts in. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check the cleanliness of this face, run an oil stone over it one last time. Give the same treatment to the sump over there, just double check the faces are all clean and flat. And then I'll clean the sump out properly and apply some more crankcase sealant and refit that. Look at that, lovely and clean. The mating faces are flat, I've double checked everything, they're clean, they're flat. I've done the same with the uh, face around here. So all I've got to do now is apply crankcase sealant sparingly and bolt everything together. I know it gets a bit repetitive this, clean it, put the sealant on it, put it together. But don't worry, we are nearly finished. Now that the sump's back on with lovely shiny new bolts, um, I've noticed that the previous lock wiring hole on the sump plug has been pulled through. So what I'm going to do is I've marked a new hole and I'm going to drill this into the sump plug. These are quite soft aluminium sump plugs on BMWs, so it's quite easy to, uh, to get it wrong for them to pull through like this. So I'm going to drill a new hole so that it can lock wire up to this bolt up here. A little bit fiddly, and yes, you could just go and buy a pre-drill bolt, but that kind of feels like cheating. Well, doesn't that look nice? I've drilled a new hole in it, and I've put got the lock wire so it's pulling the bolt tight, because the bolt obviously would like to go this way to loosen, so lock wire always has to pull the bolt tight. So lock wire that to that. Lovely. Job done there. I've also just curled the end of the lock wire around so you don't stab yourself in the finger with it. So that engine is now complete, other than... I'm just going to wrap the uh, top half in cling film to keep all the ports uh, clear of any uh, floaty around and flying around bits. And the oil filter I don't put on tight because before you fill the rest of the engine with oil, I always prime the oil filters up so that, you know, it's got a fighting chance of getting oil pressure quicker. So that's it. This engine is ready to go back in a bike. Thank you for watching this S1000RR engine refresh and I hope you've found it interesting in places. These BMW engines are quite straightforward because the design is very logical. So they're pretty straightforward to do. This in total has taken 11 hours to turn around properly and that includes obviously all the measurements and uh, the checks and the cleaning. So it's been a decent build this and is ready to go back to its uh, owner and be hopefully put to use to do many many miles. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to be the next project, but if you like and subscribe, hopefully you will find it nice and interesting.